All right, this PowerPoint presentation is going to review the Greensboro Fire Department's monthly apparatus report. We're going to try to look at this from the garage's standpoint and make sure we're meeting their expectations when we're checking our trucks at the end of the month before we send in this report. This is what the form looks like. There's about 24 key points on there. We'll go through each one and try to answer any questions you might have. First thing we'll talk about is the suspension system. Uh, Brian from the garage does a good job explaining this. So we got a couple videos here to watch him talk about it. Okay, on your monthly check report, this is under the suspension. This is what you need to check. Our main biggest problem is the leaf springs. This is the leaf spring. We are cracking these springs, especially around the U-bolt, this bolt here, or right behind the shock. So you really have to get down and do a really good visual on this spring to make sure we're not cracked, we're not broke. We're checking all the fasteners while we're here with the shock. Checking all the bolts faster to make sure we don't have anything loose, anything broke, or starting to crack. This next video we'll watch, uh, Brian's talking about the rear suspension system. Some apparatus have leaf springs, some have an air ride. If you ever have a question about any of this stuff, feel free to contact the garage and they'll help you with whatever questions you might have. Okay, the suspension on the rear is a lot more difficult to see. Uh, we've got air ride suspensions for ladder trucks. We have some pumpers with air, springs, suspension on everything else. But as you can see, you're very limited on what you can see. But get a good visual on whatever you can get a hold of and make sure airbags, you don't hear air leaking. Springs, uh, you're looking for fasteners, bolts broke. Anything you can get a visual on, try to, try to check out the rear. Uh, the windshield wiper blades, that's pretty self-explanatory. Make sure they function like they're supposed to. Make sure they're uh, clearing the windshield for you. Um, the new engines have a feature. They'll cut off when they're in, when the, the transmission's in neutral and the parking brake set. So that helps uh, extend the life of the windshield wiper blades. So if you get on a call where you think you're going to be on there a long time, just try to remember to cut them off before you exit the apparatus. Our Cushmall charging system, one point the garage likes to make on this is we don't rely on the auto eject feature. Make sure as an engineer that you unplug that uh, that cord from the uh, Cushmall charging system before we uh, get on the truck to go on calls. So one thing you want to look at, just make sure it works. When you plug it up, make sure you see lights. The picture on the left is a, a type we have on most of the Sutphins. Make sure those lights come on and the one on the right is the new pierces. Make sure those are working. Uh, truck body damage, the picture here is a roll-up door, there's some damage on it. The garage can help with this sort of thing. They can uh, uh, make sure nothing's in a bind, make sure the roll-up door's working like it's supposed to. So these are the kinds of things you want to note on the uh, end of the month um, apparatus report if you see those on your apparatus. Doors, latches, and warning devices. So you want to clean the roll-up door channels with soap and water to remove road grime. The garage says one of the biggest problems they have with roll-up doors, obviously, is uh, that road grime getting in them. And everybody's tried to open those before, and you can feel how hard they are to open. So just make sure you clean them with soap and water, and that, that monthly check's a good time to do that. Uh, equipment brackets and mounts. NPA says that if we have any equipment inside our cab, it's got to be secured. And for good reason. The picture on the left there shows a, a halligan in the wheel well. If something was to happen and, and you know this truck turn over, then that thing would be like a missile inside the truck. Also, the garage you saw where uh, when those tools are laying up against the wheel well, it'll uh, just from the vibration of the truck, it'll make a hole there. And obviously, we don't want that for the longevity of our uh, apparatus. So if we're going to have tools inside the apparatus, they have to be secured. An example on the right is a... Uh, G-rated board that's in engine 52 just for that reason. So we're ordering trucks now with those in them so um, we can mount tools in the future just like that. Alright, tires, wheels, and lugs. So the air pressure on our 
engines is 120 pounds on the front, 100 pounds on the rear. Our 70 foot aerials are the same, 120 on the front, 100 on the rear. Our 100 foot aerials is 120 pounds on the front and 85 on the rear. The picture in the center, you'll see a wear bar. That's inside that center tread there. And that, that gives you an example of how low that tread can get before we need to contact the garage and make sure we get those tires looked at. So the only, the only problem with that though, the picture on the left shows wear on a tire that was on a fire truck and the garage says that they usually start wearing on the edges before the center so you may have to judge you know that depth using that wear bar and the wear you see on the outside um, the front tires on our apparatus the depth is 4 32nd the rear tires is 2 32nd but that wear bar uh, there on that center picture is a good example on on just trying to gauge how much uh, tread you have on the tire the Picture on the right is uh, the lug and the lug nut you want to make sure they're tight You want to try to look at the wheels the rims make sure you don't see any cracks at all in them if you do obviously we'll contact the garage Mirror is pretty self-explanatory. Make sure they're working. Your controls are working from the cab. Make sure that glass isn't loose in the frame. I have seen a few of those get loose and fall out, so you just want to make sure everything's tight. Caps, plugs, and gaskets, and pretty much just making sure they're there. You don't want nothing to fall off the truck going down the road. You know, those little chains that, that hold them on, sometimes they break. You just want to make sure that everything's secure. Um, we're going to operate our drain and discharge valves when we do our monthly apparatus report. Most engineers do this every day, so it won't be nothing new. Make sure your drain valves work. Make sure all your uh, tank to pump, tank fuel, you know, all your valves work like they're supposed to. We have seen sometimes at the training division when uh, a company will come out and, and want to flow their deck gun off their tank before they uh, have a water supply. and. The tank to pump seemed like it wouldn't open all the way. There was some restriction there, not, not getting enough water to the deck gun. And come to find out when we took it to the garage, that was exactly the problem. The tank to pump wasn't opening all the way. So just confirm that, that your valve, your tank to pump valve is opening all the way. That'll make a big difference if you're trying to flow big water like that without a supply. And then the picture on the right, that's just all your valves inside the truck there. Check for fluid leaks here. You know, a good place to start on that is just checking your fluid levels, making sure everything's good. Uh, look under the truck, make sure you ain't got nothing dripping, make sure you don't have a pool of, uh, of any of those fluids underneath it. All right, seats, seat belts, and alarms. You know, everybody's had these uh, seat belt alarms that seem like they're not working properly. Um, but the important thing on seats, seat belts, and alarms is this make sure that uh, there's no safety issues with our seats or seat belts. And in the back of the truck, if we've got three seats and there's something wrong with one of them there, um, one of the firefighters can move and ride in that seat that is safe. The officer in the front or the engineer, um, if there's something wrong with their seat or seat belt, then we got to check that truck out of service and the garage got to fix it immediately. We want to make sure we're safe in the seats and our seat belts are working like they're supposed to. So if there is a problem, that's definitely something we'll get the garage to take care of. All right, our city horn and our air horn, obviously we need these when we're uh, traveling 1039 traffic to make sure we are keeping the citizens safe and they can hear us coming. So we want to make sure they're working properly every day and it's on the monthly as well. Emergency lights and uh, sirens are the same way. All those things work together to make sure we're safe when we're traveling down the road emergency traffic. So um, we want to make sure they're working like they're supposed to. Headlights and scene lights, make sure your low beams and your high beams work, and then obviously your scene lights. Our backup alarms and cameras, make sure you're familiar with how to use it and you're used to using it. Make sure you have sound so when your backer is back there and he, he yells out, you can hear him. So uh, here's our braking system and auxiliary brakes. Brian does a good job explaining this. This uh, first video he does a brake test we can do this every day but it's on our monthly apparatus report as well here is your monthly brake test uh, truck on as level of ground as we can get we do have the wheels chopped on this truck to make sure we will not roll first thing you're going to do the truck make sure it has full air pressure around 120 130 pounds going to release the parking brake. 
foot off of the brake and listen for air leaks. If you don't hear any air, apply the brake. Listen for air leaks. This truck fails. It's got an air leak if you can hear it. Let off the brake. Set the brake. This truck is out of service. If you hear any air coming out of any part of that brake test, the truck is out of service. Contact the garage. So, as you saw here, uh, Ladder 5 was in here for some unrelated issues. Brian didn't even know this was going to fail when he uh, conducted this test. So that's a good example to see. That's When he put his foot on the brake, you shouldn't hear any air. So that, that just lets you know that this truck failed. And uh, like I said, this was a good example for us. Uh, this next test, Brian's talking about the auxiliary braking system and uh, the ones that we run on our apparatus. Uh, this is your auxiliary brake monthly test, uh, probably daily as well. This has to be done while you're driving, uh, cannot be done in the parking lot. We run two different sets of auxiliary brakes. One is a Jake brake, which this truck has. One is a transmission retarder. We have some that has one of each. We have some trucks that run both. Uh, need to run the Jake's on high transmission retarder on high to make sure we have as much stopping force as possible. Slippery conditions, recommend they turn the jakes and the transmission transmission retarder off. But we do need to make sure we are running those to the, to the best of their ability to make sure we can stop the truck. We're going to check our pump controls on our monthly apparatus report. I know most engineers do this every day. Make sure you shift into pump gear uh, and it's smooth when it goes into it. Everything's okay. You got four and four on your display. Make sure your pump governor works as it should. Your PSI mode, RPM mode. Make sure your mode will switch in between. Your throttle increases and decreases. Make sure your air primer works. And then also, like we said, just work those valves. Make sure they're all working like they should. All right, this picture on the lower left talks about your pump governor. It's a diagram of what all your buttons are, what the lights mean. Remember, we have PSI mode and RPM mode. PSI mode is when you're the attack pumper, you got lines stretched off your apparatus, and firefighters are operating those nozzles. Um, RPM mode is when we're uh, connected to a standpipe, supplying a ladder truck, or we got a hydrant maximized, and we're supplying another engine. Insta chain operation, you know, we don't want to make sure these chains are working when it starts snowing. We want to make sure a long time before that that they're operational. So just make sure you check those periodically throughout the year. Um, the garage did say that in the warm months when they service your truck, they'll put uh, wire ties on these chains to keep them from dragging the ground and wearing out links. So, you know, in the summertime or when in the warm months, if you drop your chains and, and, and when you're moving, those wire ties will break off and those links may rub the ground again. So just be aware of that. You can you can lower them and raise them without moving. They just won't spin just to test them out and uh, without breaking those wire ties in your warm months. The auxiliary generator and cord reels. The garage says you just want to make sure you don't have a, any fluid leaking out of this and everything's working like it's supposed to. Um, I know if you're an engineer on the aerial, you operate that every day and make sure it's working like it's supposed to. Uh, we got it on the monthly apparatus check as well, as well just to uh, confirm everything's working well. Our aerial breathing equipment, sometimes we don't use this a lot, so we just want to make sure everybody's familiar with it. Uh, make sure your bottle's good when you turn your bottle on, that you get air to your system, and then your hoses are good when you hook up your mask to uh, get air that way in the basket. We're going to run our power tools and uh, check our ground ladders too on our monthly apparatus report. You know, most people run their power tools every day and that's what we want to do. But uh, we also want to make sure for our, our monthly checks that we that they're all squared away as well. The uh, ladders, it's a good time to check them really good. Your hooks, you can lubricate them if you need to. Your halyards and your pulleys, make sure they're good. And then the picture on the far right, the heat sensor on the ladder that had already um, seen some heat. And you want to you want to check those if they if they've seen some heat then they need to be tested and then we'll get a new sticker if it passes. 
So that's everything on the Greensboro Fire Department monthly apparatus report. The garage helped out a lot with this. And then, like I said, if you have any questions about any of this stuff, feel free to call the garage. With today's technology, we can take pictures of something, send it to them, and uh, JR or somebody at the garage will reply back and uh, help you out on that. So let us know if you have any questions.